Particles are one of the most fun areas in Maya because you have total control over the effects. And it really makes a lot of sense to use particles when you've got a lot of something, whether it be, in this case, fairy dust, or let's say snowflakes, or people. If you've got a lot of something, particle systems are going to speed up your workflow because you don't want to animate each one of those things by hand. Particles have a lot of attributes for you to tweak, and it's a little bit on the technical side compared to character animation, but it pays off. And if you have some skills with dynamics and particles, that makes you more valuable in the marketplace. Working with particle systems is an industry specialization within FX animation, and it's one that's near and dear to my heart, so I hope that you enjoy this as much as I do. The first thing, as always in Maya, is to create a project. And let's just check in with what my current project is in the File menu. Project, Edit Current, and I can just see that it's the default project in the Current Users Documents Maya Projects folder. Very good. So I'm going to create a new project under File, Project New. And I'm going to create it in that same location. But if you wanted to, you could browse to another location. Just make sure that you're creating your project folder on a fixed local disk and not on the network anywhere and not on a removable drive. We're going to be creating a particle disk cache here later, and so it's very important that you do have a project and it's on a local fixed disk. I'll go ahead and name this new project. Let's call it Particle Wand Project. I'll remember to go down to click Use Defaults to populate those fields with the appropriate folder names, and click Accept to create the new project. Now that we've got our project built, I'm going to unzip the file that I previously downloaded from digitalartsguild.com. I've got a couple of folders open already here. Here's the project folder that we just created, Particle Wand Project. And then in my downloads, I've got particles one start dot zip. So in fact, I can just drill down into that zip file, and there's the Maya ASCII document particles one start dot ma. And what I want to do is copy that into the new projects scenes folder. So let's get that scenes, and I'll just drag and drop. And now I've placed Particles 1 Start in the Current Projects Scenes folder. Back in Maya, I can go ahead and open that file. File Open Scene takes me directly to my Current Project Scenes folder. And what we have here is a basic layout. Let me explain to you what's going on. We'll be rendering out of this camera view, which has already been set up. There are some lights in this scene too. If you look in the display layers down here, you will see that there is a lights layer. And it's visible, but it's referenced, which means that we can't touch it. So there are some lights in the scene. There's a magic wand. And there's also a camera. And that's on a hidden layer as well. So we can look in a perspective view. To get a better look at our wand, I can go to my Panels menu, Perspective, Perspective, and use the usual shortcut keys, Alt and Middle, Alt and Right, and Alt and Left Mouse. Five keys so I can see shading. Six key will show me textures, but that texture is not really accurate, so do not be alarmed by the strange looking textures you will see in the viewports. The rendering looks fine. To do a test rendering, I'll right click in the view, and in the status line, I'll click render the current frame. So, as you can see, that looks fine as it is. I've already got the lighting, I've got ray trace shadows enabled, as you can see. That's enabled through the render settings. We won't go through that now, but it's enough that you know that the lighting has already been done. We're now ready to create an emitter to send particles into our scene. The magic wand is already centered in the X and Z axes, so I can go ahead and create the emitter right at the origin. I'll get in my top view, press the 4 key to just look at wires, and in the dynamics menu set, I'll go to particles, 
create emitter. You can go into the option box if you like. The important thing in here is that we're using an omni emitter. We can change all these attributes later, so it's not really critical that we know what we want right away. When I click create, the emitter is created at the origin. And I will just go ahead and move that up in either the camera or the perspective or any of the views, really. Cool, so let's take a look at this. I'll turn my grid off for a moment, display grid so we don't have to see that. I'll make the perspective view larger by tapping the space bar. Rewind in my timeline and press play. And you see I start to see some particles shooting out. But they're moving very, very quickly. And once again, Maya is playing back the scene as fast as it can. And I'm getting hundreds of frames per second here. Even though I've got 180 frames in my timeline, it's going by in the blink of an eye. So I always, when working with dynamics, need to right-click on the timeline and choose Playback Speed, Play Every Frame, Max Real Time. And just like with other forms of dynamics, such as rigid bodies, you have to make sure that you're playing back in that mode. It's the only option that will work correctly. Because if you've got lots of particles, it's going to slow down the scene. And if you've chosen this real-time option, which seems like the intuitive thing to do, if you choose that option, then you'll skip frames, and then your simulation will break because it can't calculate fast enough in order to play back in real time. And then this one, as we saw, plays back too fast. So this is the only option that works. And we've got particles coming out. And they're pretty small. We can make them larger. We can make them spread out farther and move faster. Before we do that, though, let's finish our layout phase. What I'd like to do is move the emitter closer to the tip of the wand and then parent it to the wand so that the wand will animate and the emitter will follow it uh, through the scene. So I'll select the emitter first and then shift select the wand in the viewport and press the P key on my keyboard to parent them. To test that, I'll rewind back to frame one, grab the wand and move it. And it seems like it's following just fine. So I'll press Z to undo that. I will save the scene now that I've added my emitter. File save scene as. And I'll go ahead and use this file name as a base. Click on that and I'll call it particles wand 01.ma.